I believe one of the reasons why most coding people haven't crossed the AI bridge yet is simply because of utility. Just a few days ago, Photoshop released a new generative AI feature right inside the app that will blow your mind away. I've been sharing a lot of AI advancement over the past nine months, and by far, this is one of the most impressive and something you can use right away. Let's jump into Photoshop and let's see exactly what it does. God, I'm so excited to share this with you. This is a project I worked on for KFC about last year when they had signed on a new Ghanaian a musician as um, an ambassador and this is Kitty right here. So um, of course if you're a graphic designer and you have to use this picture to make banners, flyers, posters and even billboards, your key limitation here is it's a portrait and most of the time for billboards you have a landscape orientation to work with. Now let's use AI to generate a background to make this photo a landscape, right? So select let me stretch it out to get something similar to a 1920 by 1080 p landscape now this entire area is white because of course it was a portrait and there was nothing there now let's use ai to look at the image study and learn the background and recreate an entirely new space that didn't exist before now because the ai is so smart it's going to be able to generate a good background that looks realistic and i'm sure you're going to be surprised i was surprised when i tried it out the first time and um, i'm going to see what it does this time so i'm not going to click anything just click generate the ai picks the reference from the images in the background and replicates it onto the empty side of the picture wow would you look at that the ai created an extra background that fits the entire mood from the color grading to even the artifacts in the background like this ceiling lamp right here the furniture and this is one option out of three and it already looks so good let's check out the second option second option put a laptop in the counter making it appear as if he's in the checkout <laughs> that was quite innovative and the third option added a certain people in the background I love all three options, right? Now let's, you know, let's take it a bit further. Let's say I want to put a couple of people having dinner here in the background. So let's say a couple having dinner, generate. Now let's see how AI puts people into this shot. Let's see if it's going to take into consideration the depth of field and the lightning and create something that fits as almost as if it was there in the first place. Wow. This works, this certainly works. Let's see another option. This also works. Let's see a third option. And this also works. Now look at how it blurs them out and keeps the focus on the main subject. This is amazing. Let's take this a bit further. Now this is something I'm doing for just educational purposes, so I apologize if I'm playing too much with the KFC brand, but this is just for educational purposes and this is a disclaimer. So let's say I want to turn the chicken into um, ice cream. So I'm going to make a selection around the chicken. Usually the cleanness of your selection would sort of guarantee how clean the generation is for some reason. Um, so I tried my best to make a cleaner selection, but I don't have time to go really deep detailed just because I want to make this video. So um, I'm going to type ice cream, ice cream and generate. So again, let's see how AI puts an ice cream for it to match the lightning style, the depth of field, um, even context, right? Let's see what happens here. Again, it just added some strawberry ice cream and I think this looks great. The second option, vanilla flavor, I think. And the third option, whoa, just look at that. Look at that. Now, this looks very realistic. It matched the lightning style. Look at this highlight right here. It's mimicking the light that was sort of rimming his shoulder. And this is this is why I'm saying the AI is way too smart. Because not only does it put objects in there, it puts objects in there and considers the lightning style and lightning angle. Let's say I want to give this guy a long cross earring, right? So I'm going to select the area and let's type a okay let's, let's just say an earring right let's see what ai does right here an earring well he's already wearing one earring right but let's see if ai is going to change the earring and make it look better but sometimes maybe even add more or make it even look longer because the area i selected is quite long it might be um 
convinced us. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Look at the realism of that. Look, just, just imagine. Now, before and after. For this image, I'm gonna try and change the chicken to a burger, right? So let's make a good selection around the chicken. Um, generate type cheese burger and generate. And would you look at that? Let's zoom in and check it out properly. Just look at that. It changed the chicken to a burger. Now let's see the second option <laughs> to a cheeseburger. Look at the cheese. Look at how his hand interacts with the cheese. Now this is the second option. Let's check out the third option. The third option. This, this is just brilliant. This is something that would have taken even some of the most advanced photo manipulators a really long time to do, let alone beginners or even somebody who has never opened Photoshop before. But with the new generative AI, with the click of a button with a simple prompt, you're able to generate realistic objects into images that didn't even exist before. Just look at how good this looks. Let's try other examples. This is going to help the architecture and real estate photographers. It seems like this would be very troublesome if you had to replace and take away all the people in the shot using clone stamp. But now with just generative filter, we're going to try and get almost everybody out. So this will be the most complex scene right here, a group of people and select everybody, hit generate, don't type anything, let's hit generate again. And um, most of the time, it never gives you the same option twice, right? So even I am going to be surprised by the options that we get with the selection. That, they're gone. I really love how um, it made the number of chairs four three, four. I think it makes sense that it fits in the scene like this. Now you can check this out before and after and look just how easy it is. Let's see the other options it gave. This option works, but um, there's some weird things going on in here. So first option. Now this option also works, but I think I don't like the new colors it added to the seats. Uh, for consistency sake, I prefer the third option. Now there's so many other people in the scene. Let's try and get everybody else out. So one here, another guy here, more people here, this person, these two people, this person in the pool, this person over here, this person over there, this person over there, this person over here, and this person over here. Select everybody, hit generate, and let's see how AI clears everybody out of the scene. Everybody's out of the scene in a matter of minutes, before and after. Just look how great this is. Let's try something else. Now for this option, let's assume you are a product photographer and you're supposed to create um, a social media artwork for this new perfume, right? Now, there's so much you can do as a product photographer who has this perfume to create a social media ad or any marketing material. Um, usually it will take you a long time, you have to go to town, find some props, purchase some items to make sure the product looks nice. Now with generative AI, we can just type and create the sets we need. So I'm going to select the image you generated AI. Let's say I want to put it in a luxury kitchen counter, right? So a perfume sitting on a luxury kitchen counter. Let's hit generate and let's see how this goes. So wait for it to load and let's see how this blows our minds. Perfect. Just look at how beautiful this is. This is good enough to go on social media. Just add your text, whatever information you need, and you're done. And this is a different option. This is a different option. This is another project I made for a client. At the time, there were so many things I wish we could have carried onto the location. Things that would add more context to the shoot we were having. But because of logistic issues, we couldn't bring in some generators, some wheelbarrows, some industrial equipment. So I'm going to try to use a new generative AI to add in those industrial equipments that we couldn't take on set that day. Now I'm going to zoom in, select the area I need as wide as I want it, and let's put a wheelbarrow here. So wheelbarrow and generate. Let's see what AI does. Would you look at that? Look at how realistic this wheelbarrow looks. 
Look at how the shadows were cast onto the board before and after. Look at that. Let's see the second option. The second option is filled with sand. It's not that bad, but I don't quite enjoy it. And I think the third option is great. Look at the perspective of everything here. This is this is this is pretty good. Um, let's find other industrial equipment that we can put on the side. So let's say I want to put a long gas canister over here because he's a welder. Usually they use these gas canisters, and it didn't put a gas canister there. Although I think the gas canister is quite big, so the proportions look weird. Um, I've not seen a gas canister this size before, but who's to say a size like this doesn't exist? I love how it looks. Let's see another option. A yellow option and I think the silver option because of the color and everything else works now let's look at that look at the way it matched the shadows and it's I think it's pretty good I think it's pretty good um, yeah so for an image like this we came from nowhere and we've added in some objects that I wish I could have taken on set well there you have it my final thoughts on this is, is, is all over the place right to be honest for the first time I almost feel as if these AI tools are going way too fast and they might do more harm than good. But on the other hand, as a professional, I see exactly how this thing can increase my productivity and sometimes actually even increase my efficiency. I mean, I see so many different use cases every single day. Um, I have new ideas on how to implement this new AI um, feature in Photoshop to give me much better results than what I would have had. And I feel like for a lot of creative people who don't have access to the talent or the technology or the equipment to be able to pull certain things off, a feature like this will be of tremendous help. One practical example could be people who make YouTube thumbnails. Now you can actually create very engaging thumbnails with little to no knowledge in Photoshop. I mean, just imagine you select, you type, and Photoshop does the rest. YouTube thumbnails are about to be a game changer. And it doesn't end there. You can go into documentary filmmaking, into graphic design, into illustration, into photo manipulation, and photo retouching. I mean, it's endless. And this is just the beta version. I can't imagine what it would look like if Adobe actually rolls out a final version. And since it's AI, it's only going to get better as time goes on and as it collects more data and as it learns. I mean, this is crazy. Now, I want to know your thoughts. What do you think? Do you think AI is going to replace us designers, photographers, filmmakers, illustrators? I mean, all creative people in the industry. Or do you think this is going to be the jetpack that propels us into new creativity and new heights? Let's see. Share your thoughts in the comments below. I can't wait to read them. <laughs> Bye.